Yo, what's good YouTube, man? It's Gary with the Fan TV. Back at you another video, man. The content in this video, go ahead and smash that like button. And the content in this channel, man, go ahead and hit subscribe, man. Especially if you're new here, got a lot more Ravens content coming, so definitely go hit that subscribe button, all right? Hey, so look, man, the Ravens uh, search for the officer co coordinator position is definitely starting to heat up. We're getting guys in there for second interviews. Uh, they're still requesting some guys for interviews, but let's talk about the process so far, okay? So, now, the guys that we know for sure have got second interviews or is in the, going in there at some point this come, upcoming week. Uh, Todd Munkin, OC from the Georgia Bulldogs. Dave Canales, uh, QB coach from the Seahawks. Justin Alwyn, the Broncos, well, former Broncos offensive coordinator. Now with Sean Payton there, you have to imagine that he's out of there. And um, Brian Angela Chio, uh, the Vikings pass game coordinator. And then also you have, I believe they said Byron Left, I saw from Jefferson Rebeck that Byron Left, which um, at some point got an interview with the Ravens. He could be a part of the second interview, so he could just have somebody that was interviewed prior. All right. Now, um, I'm going to be quite honest. I don't think that this Ravens uh, officer coordinator search is anywhere close to being finished. Um, I think they're going to wait to definitely after the Super Bowl because the news is that, you know, they want to get Eric Bieniemy in here too. Now, uh, I think that'd be great. I think that'd be awesome. But a guy like on the other side of the ball, uh, not other side of the ball, excuse me, but on the other team that's in the Super Bowl is the Eagles. And that's the Eagles QB coach, Brian Johnson. So I would imagine those are two guys that the Ravens want to sit down and talk to um, before they wrap up this hiring process and really uh, get, get on there onto their guy. Okay. Now, um, talking about those guys, uh, as far as the enemy goes, you have to imagine that the enemy, um, if he wants to be here, Lamar Jackson has to be involved. There's no way that a guy like Eric Manning is going to go out on the limb and take a lateral move just to coach a QB that he doesn't know. All right. Lamar Jackson is a known commodity, so you have to imagine Eric Manning wants to coach here. It's because of Lamar Jackson. All right. Now, why would Eric Manning want to coach here at all? Um, listen, I think he wants to get out of the shadow of Andy Reid. He wants to show that um, he can design his own offense. He can call the plays, everything that goes into being an officer coordinator. I think some people are still confused about what he does. Um, I'm personally, I'm not. I know that he calls plays sometimes, and I know that he's a part of a high-powered office that's, that's been has sustained greatness, going back from Alex Smith to obviously Patrick Mahomes now. So I have no questions about Eric Bieniemy, right? So uh, I would love to see that. Uh, Brian Johnson from the Eagles. He had a, he led a high-powered offense at Florida. He had Kyle Trask on for I think 40 touchdowns at over 4,000 yards. Um, now, with being with the Eagles, he's been around a quarterback like Jalen Hurts, who um, has a similar skill set to Lamar Jackson. I think Lamar Jackson is a better player. I'm not going to get into all that right now, but I'm just gonna, I'm going to say that working with a guy like Jalen Hurts gives him a, uh, an insight in how to work with the guy like Lamar Jackson. So that's why I like that. Now, as far as second interviews from that we know for sure is happening, uh, Broncos offensive coordinator Justin Alton, I'm not that... Um, I don't know if the words want to say impressed or um, something along those lines. I don't really think that he should be a, a candidate for the position, I'm being quite honest, just because he's kind of a guy with a run game background, right? Now, you just came off of Greg Roman. You just came off of a guy that that's, that's what he specialized in. I can't imagine the Ravens interview all these pass game coordinators, all these QB coaches, all these guys like that, just to go back to the guy with the same background as Greg Roman, a run game specialist. To me, that makes no sense. Um, maybe they're bringing him in for a second interview because he does some things that are specialized in the run game that's interesting. I don't know. But I think if he's ultimately the hire, I think that would probably be the most disappointing one for Ravens fans just because if it's going to feel like something similar. We just left, and we're not trying to go back to that same thing again, to be quite honest with you. All right. Um, now Vikings pass can't go in there, Brian. Uh, Angela Chio. Uh, I don't really know too much about him. I know he like, I know he's worked with tight ends. Um, I know, obviously, like I said, he's the Vikings path game coordinator. The Vikings had a good offense. Um, if he brings something similar, because Kevin O'Connell was from the Sean McVay tree. Now, if he wants to run something like that here, I would like that. You know, I like that. I think that kind of offense is very good, very explosive, and it gets your playmakers the ball in space. Um, so that would be that would be good. That would be interesting, but I'm not too sure about him, to be quite honest with you. Now, um... Todd Munkin, I think Todd Munkin is one of the names that I do like in this hiring process. If I had to say, um, I like, you know, Eric Bien and me the most. I like Brian Johnson second. I think Todd Munkin is probably third on my list of coordinators so far that through the process of guys that I like. Okay. 
Um, so with that being said, um, with Tom Munkin, he's led a very, very explosive Georgia offense. Now, I know you're going to say Georgia has better athletes than everybody on the field. And I get that. I'm not saying that's not the truth. But what I am saying is the fact that before Tom Munkin got there, Georgia's was just a it was, it was just a good offense. They weren't a great offense. They weren't a record-setting offense. And since Tom Munkin has took over, 2021, 2022, 2020, like I said before, and in, in the previous video I did about Tom Munkin, um, they went to like four quarterbacks. But since they got settled down with Stetson Bennett the last two years, They've been pretty much unstoppable on offense. All right. And um, a lot of it has to do with Tom Monkey. Now, the concern with him is the fact that when it came to the NFL, it didn't work that way all, all the time. Honestly, it didn't. All right. His, his years in Tampa Bay, James Winston was mixed in there. So, obviously, that decision making has always fallen on Tom Monkey. And it's a lot to do with James Winston. But uh, the Browns with Baker Mayfield, it didn't work. You know, I think Baker Mayfield threw 20 interceptions the year he had Tom Monkey in his OC. Okay. So. He's done great at the college level. Southern Miss and now at Georgia. The NFL has been quite shaky for him. But um, I think that, you know, he's a hot name. He's probably the top assistant in college football right now. Or one of the top two assistants in college football. So um, I get why he's back for another interview. I, I, I really do. Honestly, I get it. And uh, Dave Canales, Seahawks. So with Dave Canales, it's interesting because if you look through, you know, Geno Smith on Twitter, you know, um, he talks about how, yeah, coach, coach Dave, I couldn't, I couldn't have done this without you. And to me, that's a big deal, right? He's a QB coach that has a connection, with, that has a strong connection and bond with the quarterback. One, obviously, he's worked with Geno Smith to make him feel more comfortable in the offense and just make him a better quarterback overall. Now, obviously, Geno Smith did a lot of that work himself, and a lot of that credit goes to him. But he's been, he's not been shy about giving Dave Canales a lot of that credit and thanking him on multiple occasions for. Uh, I guess you could say his breakout season, you know, he broke out at, you know, uh, post 30 years old. So to me, that's a good sign. I like that. He's a quarterback coach that has a strong connection with his QB. His QB likes him. He says that, you know, you elevated my game, right? That's the kind of guy we want around Lamar Jackson. The kind of guy where you say, yeah, you, you can elevate, you can elevate my game. I don't feel like James Urban has done that. He was the Ravens current QB coach. You know, I think that's kind of the reason why, Lamar brings his own QB coach to training camp. You know, he just doesn't, doesn't feel that connection with James Irvin. Not that he doesn't like him, but he just doesn't feel like, yeah, this guy is here elevating my game, right? Um, now, I would say this about Dave Canales. Obviously, there's no play calling experience there, so, you know, it is what it is on that front. Also, it's the fact that he was the Seahawks' previous pass game coordinator, and I guess if you want to look at it as a demotion, went back to QB coach this season. So that's got to be a question the Ravens got to ask him was, was this, a, was this a demotion? Were you just more comfortable at QB coach? What happened here that you go from pass game coordinator two years, then back down to QB coach, right? So what, what happened in that scenario right there? I think that's an honest question that the Ravens have to ask Steve Canales, right? Uh, but he seems like a guy that could be a good candidate, that could come from an offense that the Ravens like. The Seahawks run the football. They have an efficient, quick passing game, and they also can hit you over the top. Now, obviously, they got special guys out there, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett. These are guys that can beat pretty much any cornerback in the NFL, right? Now, the Ravens need to accumulate that kind of talent if they're going to have a similar offense to, say, to Seattle Seahawks, right? They need to accumulate that kind of talent. But hopefully that's that's what they're working on in this off, in this off season is to get some more talent on the outside, right? Um, so if I had to say, like I said, man, if I had to go off these names, uh, Justin Alton is at the bottom. I'm not really interested in that. Uh, Byron Left, which I think would be interesting, so I think he's kind of in the middle for me. But at the top, um, I got Eric the Enemy, um, I got Brian Johnson, I got Todd Munkin. Those are the three guys that the Ravens make one of those three guys offensive coordinator. I'll be happy with, I'll be good with. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, man. It's your boy Gabe with another fan TV. I'm out.